my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So today's video is going to be a sort of roundup of the things that I sewed in 2021, um, but I'm just choosing key items that were my favourite things that I made. Um, just to say, I started off by thinking this would be a top 10 makes for 2021. And then as I started pulling things out of my wardrobe and revisiting things that I made last year, my list got longer. I have managed to narrow it down to 12, but within that I've got multiple makes from the same pattern, if that makes sense. Um, I found it incredibly hard to pick just 12 things from last year. There were so many things that I got sewn up that I absolutely love wearing. Um, and when I was putting things out, it's just making me smile. Um, and just being reminded of why I made it or when I made it and the different times that I've worn those garments. So I've tried to pick a range of garments and I've also thought about um, items that I've made not just for myself but for other people as well. And I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I've included two of the things that I've got sewn up in 2021 which I absolutely love. And the first one is going to be the first thing that I talk about. Um, but this one, I haven't included it in my list but I did make this last year as part of a blog post for Felicity Fabrics made in this gorgeous baby pink corduroy. Um, and we were challenged with sewing something up. It had to be a dress. And then we were given this handmade label that we had to put on somewhere on the garment. I'll link the blog post down below because it's packed full of in inspiration from all of the bloggers that blog for Felicity Fabrics. But this is the Tilly and the Buttons Bobby Pinafore dress. I'll pop a link down below so you can check out the blog post where I talk in a bit more detail about the pattern and my experience of sewing it up. But I will stand up so you can see what it looks like. So it's got buttons going all the way down and it's got the dungaree fastenings here. And then you've got the lovely bib pockets. It's really lovely and roomy. This corduroy is slightly more drapey um, than sort of a heavier weight corduroy. And then I've lined the pockets using just a rainbow fat quarter. Um, and then that's the skirt as well so in 2021 I sewed a whole range of things um lots of things I'm not talking about now but I'll put in a little video that I made of all the different things that I've made in 2021 um lots and lots of things that I still absolutely love but didn't make it into the final 12 garments that I wanted to talk about in this video but I still absolutely adore them lots of jumpers and t-shirts that have added so much to my wardrobe but I didn't end up choosing them in the end so the first garment I want to talk about is the Anna Allen Anthea blouse and I've mentioned this pattern in so many of my recent blogs because I absolutely love the pattern. Love this voluminous sleeve, I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. It sort of gathers into the shoulder and then you've got this little cuff detail. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it because of the detail on the um, cotton fabric that I use but you've got cuff detail and then you gather this enormous sleeve into that cuff detail. There's a little bit of space so it doesn't cling to your arm, which makes it super comfortable to wear. I love it, absolutely love it. And then it's got buttons going all the way down. It's got this lovely round neckline that you finish with bias binding as well. And then there's also the option to turn it into a dress, which I've also done as well. And I've got so many more plans to use that pattern. I've seen so many gorgeous Anna Allen Anthea blouses. I think it's something to do with this beautiful poofy sleeve um, and just the look of it. It's got an ever so slightly curved hem um, at the front and the back as well. And then the skirt has still got that curved hem. And then there's an option for you to make a little belt to tie across the middle just to add a little bit of shaping. Um, but this is my first garment that I just absolutely loved sewing up in 2021. I think partly to do with the pattern, but also to do with this beautiful fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. It's such an unusual fabric. So it's a cotton, it's a navy cotton fabric, and then it's got this needle punch design all over it with all these different coloured um, dots. And then I'm also really thrilled, if I undo the bib ever so slightly so you can see, I'm absolutely delighted with my pattern matching down the front of the shirt. Um, I don't know how I managed to get it so spot on, but I'm really pleased with the pattern matching. It goes all the way down to the bottom, but obviously I won't fully undress on camera. Um, I love wearing it. It goes really well with jeans, with trousers, with skirts, with dungaree dresses. Um, and I've worn it loads and loads to school, but also when I'm out and about with friends or family as well. And I just really love the combination of this really fun fabric um, with that gorgeous sleeve detail as well. 
So that is the first thing that I wanted to share with you today. Number one of my favourite makes from 2021. I'm just going to grab my list because I'm going to go down in order. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was something that I still haven't worn anywhere. I was going to wear it to school when we had a superhero dress up day. Um, but I'm sure there will be an opportunity for me to wear it somewhere. I wore it on New Year's Eve actually when we had a little party at home. And my sister came down with her three children and we had a little New Year's Eve party with the children. And I loved wearing it then. Um, I used a couple of patterns. I'm just going to grab the garments and I'll put images in of this garment as well so you can see what it looks like. But it is the gold suit that I made using this gorgeous gold brocade fabric. That I got, no, not brocade, it was jacquard fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine. I got a huge remnant piece. I think it was nearly three metres of this gorgeous gold fabric. I love it. It's on a black background and I ended up using the Sew Over It Cocoa Jacket for the jacket and it's fully lined just with black on the inside now somebody asked me when I first shared this could I wear it as a reversible jacket and I think you absolutely could um, because it's fully lined and then I've done slip stitch to enclose the hole where you pull it through I think you would be able to wear it inside out so you could have uh, the black jacket and then that little flash of gold on the inside I prefer to have it with the gold on the outside because I just think it's so fun um which is one of the reasons why i haven't got anywhere to wear it at the moment we haven't really been going to parties and things um but i do think it's a really cute little set and it was a really fun project to sew up i think just because it's something a little bit different that gold jacquard fabric with the little sparkly um sort of bits that you see um almost like an animal print it reminds me of a giraffe print um, and it's just really, really fun. It's something that I wouldn't wear on a daily basis, but I think there's just something lovely about it. Um, and then I used the rest of the fabric to sew up the Clio skirt. So it's a flat fronted waistband at the front, and then you've got elastic in the back that creates all of those gorgeous gathering. It's a really voluminous skirt. You can see in the back how voluminous it is. Um, and I think it works really nicely with that cocoa jacket as well. So I ended up using the cocoa pattern quite a few times last year. I sewed up, I sold, I sewed up the gold um, sort of jacquard cocoa jacket with the matching skirt, and then I also used this to sew up a black and white um, houndstooth jacket because I wanted to recreate. Um, an outfit that I wore when I was really little with my sister. So I used the Portobello trousers, which is a Nina Lee pattern. And then I used the Coco jacket to make a little cropped jacket. I've used this to sew up a cropped jacket for my daughter who wanted a suit. I'm um, just using some black suiting fabric. And then I've also sewn it up in like a wool fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine, which I absolutely love too. And I have worn the wool one a couple of times. I've worn the houndstooth one a couple of times. And the black jacket that I made for my daughter, she's worn absolutely loads as well. So it's a pattern that I have really enjoyed sewing up. I did a sew along for it. Um, and then I've also just used it so many times across the year that I thought I had to include this pattern as one of my top makes from 2021. Plus this fabric just really makes me smile when I see it. Um, and it's a really fun outfit to wear as well. So I'm looking forward to having some parties in the future where I can wear this. And I might create some opportunities at school where I need to wear a gold sparkly jacket with a gold sparkly skirt as well. So the jacket is by Sew Over It. It's called the Coco Jacket. Um, you can do version one, which has got some fringing down the front, or you can do version two, which is the jacket that I've done where you don't have the fringing down the front. Um, you just use lining and I haven't included any fringing there. It comes in sizes UK 8 to UK 20. Um, and then in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend a heavyweight fabric like a tweed, a boucle, viscose linen, melton, jacquard and boiled wool. This was quite a lightweight fabric, but it still works perfectly for the jacket. Um, I think it's a really lovely make and I really enjoyed wearing it on New Year's Eve. Um, and all of the other versions that I've sewn up, which I'll pop images in so you can see, um, have been really enjoyable to wear as well. It's a really comfortable jacket. It works really well with high-waisted clothes because it's quite a cropped jacket as well. And those are the line drawings, so you can see what they look like. So a little bit of cheating going on there too, because that's actually two items, but they do go really nicely together. Um, and I think I could see myself wearing the jacket um, separately to wearing the skirt as well. And I think that would work really well just with some jeans. 
um, or over the top of like a dungaree dress or something just to add a little bit of extra to a garment. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about was a dress pattern that I've sewn up quite a few versions of last year. I think I ended up sewing up about 10 of this version. Um, that gives you a little bit of a clue. It's a Tilly in the Buttons pattern and it is of course the Lyra shirt dress which was a new pattern released last year. Um, it comes in two size bandings um, and I'll put a little um, sort of thing in that gives you some information about the size bandings so I haven't got them written down. Um, but I sewed up so many versions of this dress. I've picked two of my particular favourites but to be honest I loved all of the versions of the Lyra shirt dress. Um, you can either make a knee length version, I'll show you the line drawings in a second, or you can do a midi length that's got long sleeves and a ruffle or short sleeves and a ruffle. So these are the line drawings, that's the knee length version and then that is the one that's got the extra tier, the extra ruffle on the bottom. There's long sleeves that gather into a gorgeous cuff which you can see here or you can do the short sleeves which I've done on all of mine. I haven't done long sleeves on any of my Lyra shirt dresses. It's described as an ultra cool shirt dress with an oversized blousy bodice with bust darts. There's also an option to include um, a little belt. And um, what I prefer to do on all of my versions is put waist ties in instead of a belt. Um, and then that just allows you to sort of bring it in at the waist if you want to. It's got a gathered skirt, which you can hem at the knee, or you can add that extra ruffle um, to make it more of a midi length as well. In terms of fabric recommendations for the Lyra, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton lawn, voile, seersucker chambray, double gauze, viscose, tensile, or lightweight needle cord. I have got plans to sew it up in a needle cord. I think that would look absolutely beautiful. And there are some really gorgeous features. I absolutely love the collar detail and this button placket. The long sleeves that gather into the cuff are beautiful, but I don't tend to wear long sleeves because what I tend to do is roll them up, especially if I wear something to school. So I'm just going to grab the two versions that I want to talk about today and I'll put pictures in of me wearing both of these shirt dresses as well so you can see them. So the first one, I know actually I picked three versions of the Lyra dress, I didn't realise. The first one had to be my Very Hungry Caterpillar Lyra shirt dress with the caterpillar buttons. Um, and I found those because of a lovely um, YouTube subscriber. So thank you so much. Um, I absolutely love it when you suggest um, places to look for things like buttons. I'd asked for caterpillar buttons and um, I got a brilliant suggestion. So I managed to get these gorgeous caterpillar buttons, which the children have absolutely loved. So it's a Hungry Caterpillar um, print. If you're not familiar with The Very Hungry Caterpillar, it's a children's book which we use at school. And I wore this with the children at school in mind and they do absolutely love it when I wear it. I absolutely love this pattern. It's got pockets. I've just got the waist ties. And then with this one, because I only had a certain amount of fabric, I ended up doing the knee length version as well. And I've got the short sleeves with the lovely collar detail. Um, and then I did put pockets in this version. I did have enough of the fabric to include the pockets. So that was my first version. And I think the little caterpillar buttons just really um, make me smile when I put this dress on. And then the other two versions were using fabric from the lovely Faye who runs Studio Jepson. Um, this gorgeous marble print fabric, which I absolutely adore. And again, I only had enough of this fabric to do the knee length version. Um, so there it is, knee length version. Um, again, I've got the waist ties, that gorgeous collar detail. And then for this version, I used buttons from Ethel and Joan that came in a So Haley Jane box. I think they were called Dalmatian because they're white with little black speckles. Um, and I love wearing this version as well, just with either a long sleeve top if I wear it when it's a bit chilly or I pop on a cardigan. And I just love that fabric. It's got... Um, sort of little, it's like a marble print fabric, but it looks like, if I show you on the back, it looks like it's got gold running through it. I absolutely love that print and those colours, just absolutely gorgeous. So that was another favourite of mine of the Lyra dress. And then the final favourite of mine of the Lyra dress was the one where I used this gorgeous baby pink fabric, which has got like neon dots all over it. And then I just used pink buttons going down and this fabric was from the lovely Faye as well. I think it's sold out now, but if she has got any left, I'll link it down below for you. Again, I've got the waist ties. Um, I didn't have enough in this version for the pockets, but I ended up adding, now I haven't ironed this, so I do apologize for the little crinkles on the bottom ruffle, um, but it has got a tiny little ruffle on the bottom because I wanted to use all of this fabric. So this was a zero waste 
um, dress because what I ended up doing were using all of the scraps to create this gorgeous little ruffle and I just attached them so that I cr could create the ruffle on the bottom of the dress just for a little bit of extra detail. I just fell in love with this fabric as soon as I saw it. It's a cotton poplin and it worked really nicely for sewing up the lyra because it meant that it got a really crisp collar. Everything pressed beautifully and the same with the placket, it pressed really beautifully as well. Um, and it's been a really lovely dress to wear for the summer so I'm looking forward to getting that out when the summertime comes around again this year. So those are my some of my favourite versions of the Lyra shirt dress but this was definitely a star pattern for me last year. I absolutely loved sewing it up and I saw so many gorgeous versions of the Lyra shirt dress as well. So moving on from the Lyra shirt dress but kind of keeping with the Lyra shirt dress was um, a pattern hack. So I used two Tilly and the Buttons patterns and I did promise to do a sew along for this but I just ran out of time last year with work and life and just the pandemic and everything. I just didn't carve out enough time to film a sew along, but I'm hoping this year I'll be able to film a sew along for this and instructions on how I hacked the two patterns together. So I used the bodice of the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. Um, so that was the bodice. I used the Tilly and the Buttons um, Sophia jumpsuit pattern from the Make It Simple book. I'll just find the pattern I'll show you. I think it's one of the first patterns so it's the Sophia trousers but you can also sew it as a jumpsuit and I've sewn both of them but I used the trouser pattern and then I used the Lyra shirt dress top part and I hacked them together to create a jumpsuit um, and what I had to do for the pattern if I hold it up again it's a little bit creased because I've just pulled it out of my wardrobe but I will put images in of me wearing this pattern so you can see what it looks like um, but what I did was I measured the shirt pattern on me and thought, where did I need the shirt bit to stop in order for the ties to sit on my waist? I wanted to be able to pull it in at the waist. So I measured where the shirt stopped at my natural waist, where it came in, added about an inch on the length to allow for gathering the shirt pattern piece to fit with the trousers. And then I did the same with the Sophia trousers that I've made. Um, I used the pattern piece, held it up against me for where it stopped at my natural waist, made sure that I had enough room in the crotch, um, added an inch again to allow for gathering. And then once I'd sewn up the shirt part and the trousers, I basted them together, tried it on, and then just used a strip of the fabric to act as a belt to check that it's the shirt part and the trouser part stopped on my natural waist. Um, and once I was happy with where they were positioned, then I sewed it together and I created a jumpsuit using this gorgeous um, fabric that I got from a So Hayley Jane box. It's a viscose, which is a leopard print. Um, it's a light blue leopard print with dark blue leopard print spots that have got grey in the middle. And then I just used pink buttons that I had in my stash because I thought they worked really nicely with the fabric. Um, and this ended up being one of my favourite pattern hacks that I did last year. And then I also included pockets in the trousers as well. And again, for the pockets, I held up the trousers and the trouser pattern piece next to me and just imagined where I would want to put my hand in for the pockets and then just marked the pockets on the pattern piece, thinking about how it would look as a jumpsuit. And then I've sewn up this hack a couple of times because it works really nicely together, the shirt part and then the trouser part. I love the um, sort of the, the width of the trouser for the Sophia trousers as well and it works really nicely as a shirt sort of um, jumpsuit pattern. Um, they're quite a billowy um, sort of collotte pattern and I thought that the two would work really nicely together and um, so I was really pleased with that hack and like I said I ended up sewing up a couple of versions using the hack and I'm definitely going to sew up a couple of versions this year especially so that I can film the sew along for you as well so apologies that you've had to wait for the sew along but that was my next favourite garment I think just because it was a hack I don't hack patterns very often, but it worked really nicely and I was really pleased with the end result as well. And I've worn this quite a few times to work. I love that it's got pockets to shove all the things in that the children give to me as well. And for all the endless tissues that I always need to have on myself. So that was another firm favourite from 2021. Um, the next thing was, again, a pattern that I used quite a few times last year. I think I ended up sewing three versions of this pattern. Um, I've got my favourite pair here and I will put pictures in of me wearing my favourite pair. Again, they're a little bit creased. I'm really sorry that they're a little bit creased. 
um, but I just wanted to film the video and I didn't want to spend all day ironing. I don't particularly enjoy ironing. I think I've mentioned that on my channel before. Um, but it is the Helen's Closet Yanta Overalls, which is my favourite ever dungaree pattern. It, I love the fit of them. I love the feel of them. They're quite a relaxed fit. They feel quite slouchy. They're super duper comfortable. Um, Helen's Closet Instructions, if you haven't come across her patterns, are impeccable. I absolutely love following the instructions. They're always really clear and really guide you through the making process, which makes it a really enjoyable sew. I love sewing up the Yantas because there's a lot of top stitching as well, which I find really relaxing and actually quite enjoyable. And because there's lots of top stitching, it encourages me to also slow down with my sewing, which sometimes I need to make sure that I do spend a little bit longer on those finishing touches. So it's got a bib pocket on the top and then you've got the pockets on the front. So there they are, they're nice and deep. And then you've got pockets on the back as well, sort of near the bottom area. So there are the two pockets on the back. Um, they are fairly wide legged actually as a dungaree and then they slightly taper at the bottom. Um, what you're supposed to do is finish them with a button, but I always finish my Yanta overalls um, with buckles, which I absolutely adore. So there are my buckles. Um, like I said, they're really comfortable. I've sewn them up in a green corduroy. I've sewn them up in a black corduroy. And then I've also sewn them up in a leopard print corduroy. I wear all of them. And they work particularly well for school because they're super comfortable and I can layer up with them as well. So if I know that it's going to be a particularly cold day and I'm going out in the garden because I spend quite a lot of my time outside with the children as well. I know that I can wear a Freya top with maybe a South Bank jumper on underneath um, and I stay nice and cosy and warm. They're really comfortable to move in as well. So they're perfect for work for when I'm on the floor with the children or when I need to get up off the floor as well. And I'm constantly moving between different areas in the classroom to support the children or play with them as well. So I need garments that are going to be comfortable that allow me to move as well. This um, green corduroy I had in my stash for ages. So I'm really pleased that I've got it sewn up as well. Um, and I think that's a theme to some of the makes this year. They're either patterns that I didn't get round to sewing and I tackled last year or their fabrics that I had in my stash for a while as well. So I'm really pleased that I managed to get this corduroy sewn up and green is my favourite colour. I actually worn these to, walk, to work at Christmas because I sewed them up. I think I might have sewn them in December. So I wore them to work and one of my friends at work um, said that I looked like an elf. So they are, these are um, now known as my elf, elf dungarees. But I have worn them away from the Christmas period too, and I will continue to wear them away from the Christmas period. I think actually this Anthea blouse might go really nicely with them too. So the Yanta overalls, I think, are a pattern again that I'm going to sew up this year. I absolutely love them. I love wearing them, and I can see plenty more Yanta overalls in my wardrobe. I'm actually really interested in sewing up the shorts version for the summertime. I think that would be a really cute garment to have in my wardrobe for the summer. Um, so the next thing that I've chosen to share with you that was a favourite for me in 2021 was this shirt pattern that I sewed up for my husband. So it's a McCall's pattern, M6044. Um, it was a really straightforward shirt pattern. Um, I opted for, let me see if I can remember, I think I just went with version A. It was short sleeves, it's got a patch pocket um, on the left hand side. Um, it's got the collar, but there's no yoke on the back. So it was quite a straightforward sew. I don't often sew with the big four patterns. I find that their sizing can be a little bit off. I find their instructions sometimes can be a little bit confusing. But I have really enjoyed sewing up this shirt, and I'm definitely going to use this in 2022 as well for my husband. Um, the, the other reason why I chose this is because it brings back really lovely memories of a family holiday that we were fortunate enough to go on last summer. So we ended up going to Greece and we were really lucky to be able to go and do that. So we made lots of lovely family mem memories and looking at these shirts just reminds me of that family holiday. Um, and then also one of the fabrics, which is this gorgeous lion print fabric, I actually bought when I met up with the lovely Laura, who is Specky Seamstress and the lovely Tamlin who is sewn on the tine, we met at Satisfaction to go and do a little bit of fabric shopping and fabric stroking. So this tiger print fabric reminds me of that really lovely trip that we went on. And it was really lovely to be able to meet some sewing friends in real life as well. So this is a gorgeous, I think it was called a crepe de chine fabric that I got from Satisfaction when I met up with Laura and Tamlin. It's got these gorgeous, um, I nearly said lions, it's got these gorgeous tigers all over it. Um, and I just think it's a really fun print. 
Now I'd originally bought it from Satisfaction, thinking that I would turn it into something for myself. But when I got home, my husband eyed it up and absolutely loved it. So I thought, actually, I'm going to turn it into something for him because I've got so many things that I'd sewn up for myself last year. So I used the um, McCall's pattern and sewed up version A. And if I show you the line drawings on the back, if you can see them, that's what they look like. Um, but I sewed up the short sleeves, which you see with version A. It's easier to see on the front. There we go. I found this pattern a really enjoyable sew, really straightforward to sew up as well. And it came together in a couple of hours. So if you're looking for a really straightforward men's shirt pattern, I would highly recommend the McCall's M6044 as a pattern to tackle. Um, it comes in sizes, um, small up to extra, extra, extra large. And I sewed up for my husband a medium and it was nice and roomy for him because he didn't want a shirt that was going to be too tight when we were going on holiday. So this was the first version, that gorgeous tiger print. And then I just added some gold buttons that I got from Felicity Fabrics. And then there is the pocket on the front at the top. Um, I'll put in some pictures of him wearing this shirt from when we were on holiday. And then the second one was definitely a jazzy holiday shirt that I sewed up for him. Um, using a really lovely lightweight viscose that I got from Selvage and Bolts. Um, I just think it's a really fun holiday print fabric. Um, with all those palm tree leaves all over it. I just think it's really, really fun. Um, and again, I sewed up exactly the same version. He's got the pocket on the front there. Not that you can see it because the fabric's so busy, but he's got a little pocket on the front. And in terms of buttons for this version, I used some uh, Pigeon Wishes buttons, which are quite a busy print, so you can't really see them because that fabric is quite busy too. It took me a while to decide on buttons for this shirt just because of that gorgeous print. Um, it's a really lovely lightweight shirt, so it was absolutely perfect for taking on holiday and coping with that heat. Um, so those two were a really enjoyable sew last year. Um, it was really lovely to see my husband enjoying wearing something that I'd sewn up for him as well. And we all ended up taking something on holiday um, that I'd sewn up for the family, which was also a real highlight for me last year, just seeing my family enjoying wearing something that I'd made for them. So I wanted to include those two shirts just because they bring back such lovely memories of shopping with friends, but also a really enjoyable holiday that we got to go on as well. Um, and then sticking with the holiday theme, the next thing that I wanted to share with you that was a particular highlight for me in 2021 was sewing up some swimwear. So I've sewn swimwear for myself um, using a different pattern. Um, who was that pattern by? Megan Nielsen, the Cottesloe swimwear set. Um, but Helen's Closet brought out the Sandpiper swimsuit pattern last year. I absolutely fell in love with it. It comes in two different size bandings and two different cup ranges. So you've got a B cup size range, which is 0 to 22, or you've got a D cup size range, which is 12 to 34. So I fell in love with it for the um, sort of size range because I knew using the size 0, I'd be able to tweak it to fit both Ruby and Lola. So that's what I did. I used the size 0 for Ruby and Lola, and then I just basted it for Lola and ended up taking some um, of the fabric out to get it for her and then I just used a straight size zero for Ruby and then I was able to obviously use the pattern for myself as well so I'm just going to find the uh, line drawings for you so it's called the Sandpiper swimsuit so it's a two-piece swimsuit and that's what it looks like on the front and these are the different variations that you can sew up so there's view A and there's also view B and that's what the line drawings look like so for um, the Sandpiper swimsuit, it's the ultimate sporty two-piece um, swimsuit for swimming, water sports and fun in the sun. You can either choose high-waisted or low-rise bottoms. So you've got the high-waisted here and then you've got the low-rise bottoms there. Um, view A features a band finish on the top and bottoms and View B features a wider band on the top and an elastic finish on the bottoms. The neck, arm and leg openings are all finished using swimwear elastic. It's a quick make and a great option for people who are sewing their first ever swimsuit. And that is exactly what I would say. It sewed up really nicely. It was a really straightforward pattern to follow the instructions. Um, fits really nicely as well. I used some really fun fabrics that I got from Semi Sunshine and then also some fabrics that I got from, um, oh, what's it called? Um, Fabric Land near me. Um, it was really fun going shopping with Ruby and Lola and getting them to choose their own fabrics. So the fabric that Lola chose was tiger print because she absolutely loves tigers, has done since she was a baby. 
So that's the first fabric that she chose and it was really, really fun. So I chose the high waisted bottoms for her and then she's got that thick waistband. And then I did the same with the top. She's got that thick band on the bottom. Um, it's a really lovely shaped swimsuit. So you've got that scoop neckline at the front and then at the back, it goes in ever so slightly. She really loved wearing it because it's got that thick band on the bottom of the top piece and then the thick band on the um, swimsuit bottoms. It meant that she got an awful lot of coverage as well, which was great when I was thinking about making sure that she didn't get any sunburn and she loved wearing those. And then Ruby chose this gorgeous blue sort of abstract print um, swimwear fabric that we got from Fabricland as well. I love it, it's got really good recovery. Um, and again, I did the same style of top and bottom sedged for Lola. So it's got that really lovely neckline um, and then it goes in ever so slightly at the back. She's got the really deep hem on her top and then the same for her trousers, her bottoms. Oh, I didn't pick her bottoms up, but I did the same for her bottoms. She's got that thick band on the bottoms as well. And again, she really loved wearing it and it gave her really good coverage as well when we were in the sun. And then for me, I used a couple of really fun fabrics that I got from Semi Sunshine. So I got this gorgeous, like daisy print uh, fabric and I did the same top. So I did that thick band because I just wanted to make sure that I had really nice coverage. And then for their swimsuit, I meant to say, I just used the same fabric to line it. But for mine, I already had some swimwear lining fabric. So I just used that for this one. I'm really pleased with that. And then the bottoms, I didn't add to the band for my um, bikini bottoms. I just left them um, and used the elastic to finish them off. So that's what the bottoms look like. And then I used this really fun fabric that I got from um, Sumi Sunshine for this one, which is a really bright neon print swimsuit fabric, which I absolutely love. And I've worn these to swimming at home as well, not just on holiday. And then here is the top, which again, I did the same. I've added the band just for a little bit of extra security, especially when you're jumping into the pool. Although I have a fear of water, so I don't actually jump into the pool. I slide in very slowly to make sure that I don't get any water splashed on my face because I really don't like having water on my face. Um, but I do know how important it is for me to get in the pool and show my girls that swimming is a really good hobby to have. So I do make, my sh make myself do it, but I don't jump into the pool. Um, so this is the top and it's got the thick band along the bottom as well. It was a really proud moment for me seeing my girls wearing the swimsuit that I'd made for them. And we've got a photo of us three wearing our swimsuits as well. It was really lovely being able to say the same pattern as well. And as I've said before, Helen's closet patterns are so brilliant at holding your hand. Um, these were a really enjoyable sew. And I sewed these a couple of days before we went on holiday. And they were super comfortable to wear and they offered us lots of protection from the sun as well. So on to the next thing, which was something really fun that I enjoyed sewing up using some fabric from um, Studio Jepson. And it's this gorgeous cotton poplin um, sort of Halloween print fabric. It's quite subtle with the Halloween print. Um, and I wore it as an autumn dress, but I did wear it to school when we were thinking about Halloween. It's got pumpkins all over it and different squash. And then if you look really carefully, you can see spiders webs and little spiders all over it too really enjoyed wearing this to school and I also wore it when we went trick-or-treating too and then on the back I used some Ethel and Joan buttons you're probably not going to be able to see them very well because they're just clear buttons but they've got a little bit of white in them and the reason I went for white buttons is because I didn't want to detract from that gorgeous print I used one of my favorite patterns which is now my pattern envelope is pretty battered because I've used this pattern so many times but it is the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress and I used the add-on pack to do the button-down placket on the back. And then I've got this cute little ruffle um, on the sleeves as well. So I've done short sleeves and then I've got this cute little ruffle because I wanted to make the most of all of that fabric. And I just adore that little touch. Um, and then I've got the button-down placket on the back. Um, and then the front, um, you've got, I don't know if you can see, but you've got bust starts on the front just here. Um, and then it's a gathered skirt. Now, I didn't have enough of the fabric to add the ruffle on the bottom for the add-on pack, but I think that works absolutely fine. Um, and I just wore it with tights and then I popped a cardigan on as well and it worked absolutely fine. It was really comfortable to wear. I did have enough fabric to include pockets as well, which is great. Um, and that just meant pockets are really important to me because I wear quite a lot of my clothes to school. 
Um, and if a garment has pockets, then I will 99.9% .9 of the time put pockets in if I've got enough fabric. Otherwise, um, sometimes I will leave them out, but it's really helpful to have pockets at school because I've always got to have post-it notes on me, tissues, pens, um, all kinds of things. The children are constantly giving me things all of the time, so it's really helpful to have pockets, um, which is why I go on about pockets so much. Yeah, it's got this gorgeous gathered skirt and it's just a really enjoyable sew. It's a pattern that I know really, really well. Um, and I know that it's a pattern that fits me really well as well. Um, and it was really nice to be able to sew something up for Halloween, but also to be able to wear in the autumn time. And I think I'll be able to wear this outside of the um, season of autumn as well, because it's got pumpkins all over it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a Halloween dress. Really enjoyed wearing that um, when we went trick or treating as well. It was very fun. The next one I'll pop on in a second so you can see what it looks like because it's a denim jacket. I absolutely love the Sew Over It Sorrento denim jacket pattern. It's a really, really enjoyable sew. I've sewn up quite a few versions now and this was one of my um, most recent versions that I sewed up last year using some denim fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. Um, and the reason I really enjoyed this one, I mean, I love all of my denim jackets and I wear them um, obviously when the weather's not too chilly, but I do wear them quite a lot as layering pieces. But this one, I had lots and lots of fun sewing up using some fringing that I got from the new craft house. So I sewed up some fringing on the back of it. And then I also put some fringing on the sleeves as well, just for a little bit of fun. Sometimes I enjoy sewing things just to have a little bit of fun with my sewing. And this definitely was a really fun project to work on. If I pop it on over here, you'll be able to see, um, I love wearing a denim jacket as a layering piece, more so in the spring and summer when the weather um, is warm enough for me to just get away with wearing a denim jacket. I love the classic blue colour. Obviously, it doesn't go with what I'm wearing at the moment, but I love the classic blue um, colourway of that fabric. And then what I also love is you don't realise that you've got the fringing on the sleeves until I go to reach for something or, um, you know, grab something or lift my arm up. And then you've got that gorgeous, fun fringing. And then I've got it here as well. And also on the back of my jacket. I just think it adds a really fun touch to a what would normally be quite a straightforward, plain denim jacket, which would work perfectly without the fringing. Um, but it was definitely a really fun sort of project to work on. And the reason I sewed this up is because I saw somebody at a festival that we went to that had a jacket that had fringing all over it. And I just felt immediately inspired to have a go at sewing my own jacket that had fringing all over it. Um, and I've since really enjoyed wearing this. And I think the blue and the green go really nicely together as well. Now, because I've added this fringing and it does molt, not massively, but you do get the odd strand of fringing. I don't know if you can see that, that falls off. It does mean that this jacket is dry clean only. I can only sponge dry it. I wouldn't be able to chuck this in the wash because all of the fringing would probably wash out, which is not what I want to happen. Um, so I would say if anyone was considering using fringing, that's just one thing to be aware of. That I can't pop this in the wash. Um, I can only dab it if I get anything on there. I am quite clumsy and I do tend to be quite messy. But so far, I haven't managed to spill anything on my denim jacket yet. Um, but that was definitely something that I really enjoyed sewing up last year um, and makes me smile when I see it hanging up in my wardrobe. And I can't wait for the weather to get warm enough for me, for me to be able to bring out all of my Sorrento jackets again. So it's a sew over, sew over it pattern and it came in their Summer Dreaming ebook. I'll put pictures in of what the pattern looks like and I'll link it in the description below as well if you want to go and check it out. Um, I would recommend it. It was a really straightforward pattern, especially if you haven't sewn up a denim jacket before and you would like to have a go at sewing up a denim jacket. It's got all of the features that you would expect to see with a denim jacket. So it's got the pockets um, and the pockets you can line. Well, you do line them. I just use the denim for the flap. Then for the actual pocket facing, I've used a So Henny Jane fat quarter so that it wasn't too bulky. And then you've got the jeans buttons. You've got the jeans buttons going all the way down the placket at the front. And then you've also got those tab details on the back of your jacket as well. If I hold it up. There's lots and lots and lots of top stitching. So if you're not a fan of top stitching, um, just be warned, there is a lot of top stitching with this denim jacket. I find that quite relaxing, so I really enjoyed sewing the jacket with all the top stitching. You can just make out the top stitching on the front of the jacket and then also on the um, sort of sleeve as well. Um, and then you've got this gorgeous sort of cuff detail on the sleeve 
which I used a Sir Hilly James fat quarter to do the binding for the cuff opening. And then you've got the buttons as well. Really, really fun and really enjoyable to sew up and also really fun to wear. So I had to include my denim jacket in my favourites from last year. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was my um, Nina Lee Bakerloo dress that I sewed up last year. Feels like I sewed this up ages ago, but it was last year when I was checking back on my Instagram page. Um, so I didn't know that I was a massive fan of a big collar until this pattern came out. So it's a pattern by Nina Lee and it's called the Bakerloo Blouse and Dress. I've sewn up a blouse version, which I actually wore to work yesterday and I got loads of compliments on, which was really lovely. Um, and then there's also the dress version. It comes with these gorgeous voluminous sleeves that are gathered into this beautiful cuff, which I can show you on this version in a second. Here's the gorgeous cuff. You sew an elastic casing and then put in elastic and it creates this beautiful gathered detail. I've sewn a couple of versions of these. Um, I worked on a collaboration with the wonderful Kath, which I'm sure you all follow over on YouTube and Instagram. Um, so made by Kath Craft. Um, and we worked together using the same pattern and we didn't tell each other what we were going to sew up. Um, this gorgeous cotton poplin was from Fabric Godmother. It came in one of their, um, what are they called? So this fabric is from Fabric Godmother and it came in their dream wardrobe box a while ago. I absolutely love all of the colours, which is why I've chosen this version as my favourite. But to be honest, I loved all of the versions that I sewed up last year. And I've definitely got plans to sew up more of these this year using some of my fabric that I've picked for my Make 9. So the Bakerloo dress and blouse comes in two size bandings. So you've got a UK 6 to 20 and then you've got a UK 16 to 28. Um, I got the paper pattern. I love getting paper patterns because I love the booklet that comes with paper patterns and um, rather than printing out A4 uh, pattern instructions or using my laptop to read the instructions. Um, you can sew up the blouse, which is this version, or you can sew up the dress. And it's got that gorgeous statement collar as well. So on this version, I opted to do a contrast ruffle for the collar. So you can see it there. I just used some lilac, um, I think it was like some linen fabric that I had in my stash, just to draw out the little lilac flowers that you can see. Or you can choose to use the same fabric to um, sew up that little ruffle that's on the collar. The collar is a statement collar, it is really oversized. And I wasn't sure how I'd feel about that collar, but I absolutely love it. And then you finish the neckline with some bias binding. And I use some Specky Seamstress bias binding to finish my neckline. And then you've got a little rouleau loop on the back. And then I've just got a little button, a little purple button um, that I've added. And it, then you, because you've got that little rouleau loop and the button, you get this little peephole on the back, which also adds a really lovely um, sort of little touch to your dress. So this is my version. I've got the gathered skirt and then I've got the long sleeves with that beautiful gathered cuff on the end as well, which makes it really comfortable, but it also adds a little bit of detail. Um, I ended up taking a little bit of volume out of the sleeve because I wasn't sure how I felt about the big collar and the big voluminous sleeves. But actually my next make, I ended up just leaving the volume in because I really liked that. I love that collar and I really love the contrast on this version as well because it really um, sort of brings out the lilac colour in those flowers and I absolutely love this, this fabric as well. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I've worn this quite a few times to school and always got lots of compliments too, which is always really lovely. Um, and I just love how bright and colourful it is as well. It's definitely my sort of fabric. I love bright and colourful things. Um, so that was a really enjoyable sew. Nina Lee's patterns are always really well written and they really guide your hand as well. Um, and there was some really lovely um, sort of aspects to the pattern, like the ruffle. I really enjoyed sewing the collar together, actually. That came together really nicely. Um, and that was another favourite of mine from 2021. I could have picked all of my Bakerloo blouses and dresses, but I've gone for that one in particular just because it's nice and bright. And I really love that fabric as well. Uh, the next one was the pyjamas that I sewed up recently for Christmas. So I've gotten into a tradition of sewing up matching family pyjamas for Christmas. I used some fabric that I got from First for Fabric, so some grey Pontel fabric, and then I used the Studio Jepson KLP 
t-shirt pattern so there's the mini KLP for Ruby and Lola and then I use the ladies KLP for me and then sticking with the Studio Jepsen patterns I use the rider t-shirt pattern for my husband I just use some grey Pontel fabric and then I um, appliqued an initial onto the t-shirt for all of us um, so L for Lola, R for Ruby, M for Mummy and D for Daddy and then I used some cotton poplin that I got from First for Fabrics to sew up some pyjama some pajama bottoms for us as well. So for my husband, I used the Tinny and the Buttons Joe pyjama bottoms. And then for myself and my girls, I used the Sew Over It um, Ultimate pyjama bottoms. And then because the pyjama bottoms I knew would be quite tricky to tell the difference, particularly between Ruby and Lola, what I ended up doing, I'm just looking for it on here, is I ended up sewing onto the one of the house roofs for each of us their name. So I don't know if you can see, you can just see I've stitched Ruby onto there. And then I did put a label in the back. So for Ruby and Lola, I put a label that says love you to the moon and back. Because I do love them to the moon and back. So we all got matching pyjama bottoms and we all got matching t-shirts as well. And I'll put a picture in of us wearing them. Um, I think I included this um, sort of pattern or these makes because it really made me smile seeing us all wearing matching pyjamas. Again, my family loved wearing them over Christmas and it's just become a really lovely tradition that in the build up to Christmas, I make us all matching Christmas themed pyjamas. So I'm already on the lookout for some Christmas fabric for next year. Um, I sewed these up the week before Christmas, which I was a little bit like, am I actually going to get these finished? I did manage to get them finished amongst all the other things that I wanted to sew up as presents. Um, so yeah, that's become a really lovely family tradition. So I just wanted to include that as one of my favourite things that I sewed up in 2021. So the next thing I wanted to share as my favourite, and I think this is the final thing if I check my list. Yeah, this is the final thing that I'm sharing as my favourite make from 2021. And it is matching dressing gowns that I sewed up for myself and also for my husband in this gorgeous waffle knit fabric. Now, this fabric was given to me as part of my ambassador role with Abacon Fabric. So I will mark this as an ad. Um, and the pattern that I chose to use to sew these up was the larger dressing gown pattern. I've talked about this pattern loads. I absolutely love it. It's a unisex dressing gown pattern. It's by Named Clothing and there are two different options. So you can do an option that stops at your knee or you can do a longer length option which stops at your ankle. For all my versions, I've done the shorter version. It goes just beyond your knee actually. Um, and this waffle knit fabric is absolutely perfect for a dressing gown. Um, the reason I've included this as one of my favourites is because I've worn it loads. My husband's worn it loads too. Um, since I made it, I think we've worn it every single day when we're in our pyjamas. It's super comfortable and I know that it's going to be a garment that gets worn absolutely loads. Um, the instructions to the larger dressing gown pattern were really straightforward and really hold your hand. It was a really, really enjoyable sew and it came together really nicely as well. I know that this pattern would work in a whole range of um, fabrics. So I sewed it up as a gift for my mum using a cotton jersey, um, which worked perfectly. No, actually, I think it was a sweatshirting jersey and it worked perfectly for that. Um, I'm yet to get a picture of her wearing that dressing gown. But um, I also sewed this up for a friend who was going through some um, sort of difficult times. So I used a satin fabric to sew up a dressing gown for her as a gift. So I know that it works in a variety of fabrics and it's a really enjoyable sew as well. And it's just really lovely to see people wearing things that you've made as well. Um, and to see how much my husband enjoys wearing the dressing gown as well just really makes me smile. So that's why I wanted to include this dressing gown as well. Those are the line drawings. There's a belt as well and it's got really deep pockets, which I absolutely love. Let me show you the pockets. They are really, really deep and really big pockets, which is a win in my opinion. It comes in sizes extra small up to extra, extra large. And in terms of fabric recommendations, they suggest um, to choose a light or medium weight non-stretch fabric. Although having said that, I have sewn it up in a stretch fabric and it worked absolutely fine. Um, so they suggest natural linen, terry cloth or honeycomb fabric. And this waffle knit fabric works really nicely as well. And for a lighter version, you can choose a rayon or a satin. And I would suggest a satin if you want like a luxurious feeling to your robe. Um, it took a lot of fabric, um, so they recommend between 2.6 and 4.6 metres, depending on what size you're sewing. I had five metres of this fabric and I sewed up two versions, one for myself and one for my husband. 
and I used all of that fabric and I sewed up the shorter version. So it does take up a lot of fabric, but it's definitely worth it. It's super cozy pattern. And I really love that it's unisex as well. And it works with a whole range of um, fabrics. So that was my last favorite make from 2021. And um, I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've identified as my favorite things from the year. If you were to pick one of the things that I've shared with you today, which one would be your favorite? Please let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.